Oh no, who's coming out? This dude. What the hell, Frank? He smelled his hands. <laughs> hey, what's going on? It's your boy Sintel, and we are getting ready to do a watch along for one of my favorite animated series of all time, Cowboy Bebop. But we are not going to watch the animated one. We are going to watch the live action one that is being done by Netflix. It should be a fun ride. Uh, some people uh, love it, some people hate it. I have yet to watch it. I've still kind of kind of been plowing through some of the original content so that I can get a good foundation because it had been a while since I seen it. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscription button, click the bell icon so that you can get up-to-date notifications anytime I drop something new and then we can all hang out and watch it together. Now, there's going to be a few rules regarding this watch along that's going to be a little bit differently. One, we will not be able to watch the entire series uh, moment to moment, frame by frame because copyright restrictions. But we will be able to highlight some of the things that stand out the most, uh, some of the reactions that are going to be said. They'll be done probably by eight to ten second chunks and we're going to have to be uh, really careful with how we do the music. And then of course, after everything is said and done, we'll have like a quick chop up. You know, we'll chop it up and see what we liked, what we loved, what we didn't, what we're expecting. All right. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get this bad boy started with Netflix's version of the live action Cowboy Bebop. Can't believe Netflix got this property. I hope they're doing it right because the trailer's blood. Oh wow, we're starting off with crazy gunfire already. Shitbag corporations. They control everything. Hey. Oh, the AK. Every single one of these corporate cockroach assholes be taken out to the woods and the woods set on fire. Damn. <laughs> Norman. <laughs> My man had a seat right after she said it. <laughs> For stabbing a pit boss in the eye. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> Uh oh, I like this countdown. Floyd was up there. Ah, there's the harmonica. I love it. Spike with your cool self. Hey, you with the headphones? Oh, yo, I love they got the gear right, though. Obviously, not the headphones, though. What the hell you think you're doing? Me at all. I, I just, uh, I came here to place a bet. <laughs> oh. Nice. All right, Spike. Nice. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. Whoa. God damn spike. You're supposed to wait for my <laughs> signal. <laughs> That's a hell of an interest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, stab yourself again. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, she dies. Oh, she dies. Wait, that's. That's your hostage? Spice. Oh, she's like 80? He said, what is she like 80? <laughs> This thing. What the hell, Frank? He smelled his hands. Nice. God <laughs> damn, bitch! Whoa. Right, Spike? I ain't screwing around, cop. <laughs> and you're not worth that much. Piece of shit, cowboy. 
Oh. Oh no. It's time to dip. Ah. All right. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yo, that's a dope way to reveal the casino. I'm not mad at that. Uh, uh, uh. Where is it? Oh, wow, he hit too, of course. <laughs> wow. I'm in dead, but damage is okay? I'd say very badly damaged would be A okay. Huh? Mm. Just a humble bounty hunter, man. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Hey, there go the bebop. Man, it looks nice and weathered. I like that. Yeah, the jazz is what's up. I hope his price went up. Kimmy has a birthday coming up. And you oh, they got that Charlie Parker in the background. You work at being an asshole? No, actually, it comes naturally, unlike your arm. <laughs> wow. Okay, that looks nice. Feels very desperado. <laughs> May I have a glass of water? No water today. Damn, you turned straight up tequila to a pregnant lady? <laughs> oh man, said I'm out. <laughs> hey. Oh. Oh. Yeah, my man definitely looked crazed. All right. Yeah, they're doing a good job with the music, which is important. Europa, huh? Isn't that like a... A moon of Saturn, I think. Europa, maybe. Probably wrong on that. Inch, calling in an anal fissure. Piece of shit, Galloway. <laughs> oh! Oh! You don't need that ankle. Tell me I wouldn't cross the street to piss on you if you're on fire, but your ex-wife asked me to throw your bone every now and again, so. Wow! to give John Cho credit for, you know, dieseling up or leaning out. Both, actually. He looked great. Dang, they only brought back a hundred after 100, expenses. 
He didn't look pretty shocked. He was shocked. <laughs> and then he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lead on the bounty. Asimov Solensen, post Earth refugee. This is the big lead you got. <laughs> Last seen in New Tijuana. T TJ, no. No TJ. What now? Do you know what I got? Is that a old Mac? <laughs> On the thing it is. Psychos. Beyond me. Psychos are more fun. Anything else? <laughs> Come up with the goods, yeah. Excuse me, fellas. Ah, they got the three old men out here. Yeah, so it's, it's never just one pull. Yeah, I've heard that too. Hey, forgive this for coming off like a cheap. She's a little kitty pie. So, um... He ain't even give her a cigarette back. That's terrible. Those are some real pretty words there, cowboy. Does that shit work on all the girls? Can I help you? Yeah. Whoa! I wasn't expecting her. Nice. Uh, nice. Uh, Y'all fighting and they both getting away. Look. Uh. She hit you with the eyes. She like, you can't shoot oh, him. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Who are you supposed to be? Jet Black, meet Faye Valentine. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> Suddenly, you give a shit about the rules. No, that's... Right when I need the dough to buy my daughter a birthday present? Jet. You don't want my daughter to have a birthday? <laughs> Nice. Yeah, let's bring her out. I love how it's got that old school. Oh no, these are two totally different vehicles. Okay. Yo, Jack got the cycle, huh? Word. Bad. Hey guys! <laughs> I was about to say, I hope they didn't just like leave the keys in the ignition. Password being. Okay. <laughs> you gotta be careful. You gotta be like kidding. You <laughs> say idiots. Yeah, that's hilarious. Not interested. Oh. Please don't hurt him. <laughs> Too late. He got that evil in him. That bad boy exploded immediately. <laughs> oh! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh. Hey! Came in with the clutch shot. Oh, sweet home, get to the hypergate. Yeah, man, he's about done. It's time to wake up. Ooh, that's gonna be an ugly wake up for you, though, homie. Drugs. Mm, mm, mm. I bet that place smells horrible. Ooh, who is this? 
Got an idea of who it could be. <laughs> hmm. Whoa. Look who it is. There's the rose that we saw earlier in Spike's flashback dream. See you, Space Cowboy. Oh, yeah, I'm glad they ended it on that, too. All right, so, hey, so that was the very first episode of the live animated live action series version of Cowboy Bebop. Uh, okay, so the first thing, I guess we could talk about some of the good before we get to the good, the bad, and the ugly. <clears throat> The good is uh, how it looks. Uh, it looks the part. The characters look the part. Uh, John Cho looks the part of Spike. Uh, I was a little concerned about that because Spike has just been the epitome of cool for like 20 plus years, right? I mean, he's always kind of like laid back, chilling off in the shadows, you know, smoking his little cigarette uh, or he's like pointing his gun, looking cool or whatever it is. And I was just wondering like, how does that actually translate with John Cho? But as you can, but there's a moment when he's like practicing on the, uh, on the, on the hitting dummy or whatever that, that little thing is that they, uh, that they spar with. And you can see like he leaned all the way up. Like he lost some considerable weight in order for that to, uh, in order for that to be like uh, believable. Um, one of the biggest changes that you see immediately is Jet, who's played by uh, Mustafa Shakir. And Mustafa Shakir got more of his fame from playing um, Bushwhacker, Bushmaster, that's what it is, not Bushwhacker. <laughs> he got most of his uh, fame playing Bushmaster uh, in the, the Luke Cage series, and he absolutely killed it. So and when you play Bushmaster, it was a lot more intense. This time, he's a little bit more subdued. Um, when you watch the original animated series, Jet is a little bit more kind of like chill. He's like an old school uh, military slash police guy, I think, if I remember right. I know you guys were correcting me in the chat. Um, but now he's turned into a bounty hunter. He's kind of like the, the elder statesman of, of, of the ship that's on the Bebop. Um, it, it's a little jarring at first just because of just the, the contrast of, of the look. But then once you kind of like get past it, like that first like 10 or 15 seconds of looking at him, you... you you know, it works. He, he's Jet. There are some some significant changes in this episode compared to what was seen in the original series, and that is to be expected because it can't be frame by frame, and the story can't be exact, or you have no way of maintaining the interest of people that have already seen the series. Uh, the opening sequence with them robbing or <laughs> stopping the robbery of the casino was a pretty good introduction to to the fight sequences, the music that's going to be introduced. Uh, how the characters interact with one another. So I thought they did a really good job of that. Um, them going into the very first episode regarding uh, in Tijuana with the, the couple that's uh, trying to, uh, two lovers lost, that's trying to, to escape their, their old lives and, and hop into these new ones by selling this super uh, expensive drug to get out of the store from the syndicate does kind of match well with, with what the original series is, but they, they do change a couple of things up as well regarding uh, their first interaction that Spike has with the young lady at the gas station. Um, and then we get introduced to a whole brand new thing that flips the world upside down, and that is that we get introduced to Faye Valentine way early, because I think in the series it doesn't happen for at least like episode five or six or something like that. Um, you're at least like a quarter into the way into the series before you get introduced into fame. But now, you know, within like the first half of the very first show, we get introduced into fame, which is fine because you, you kind of we got to get the ball rolling. And, you know, she she looks a little bit different. Like, I'm sure purists are going to feel some kind of way because her original costume just isn't sensible for today's uh, for today's uh, show. Because, you know, she pretty much got like some Daisy Duke shorts and the proportions are all like weird and odd so if you're looking for that that's not it but she still looks the part like you're you're you are you know that is going to be Faye the actress does a, a pretty decent job as well she, she's kind of funny um it should be interesting to see how, like how that relationship grows uh and then them chasing them down um we get introduced to the syndicate like really early uh or at least being known that that it's the syndicate um and everything kind of just kind of just moves along uh, so uh, the bad is that it's doing a good job. It's not a phenomenal job. I guess that, that's that's the best way that I can describe it. Um, kind of like to kind of go back to some of the good as well. Like the 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 music is really good. 
Uh, one of the things that makes this show so unique is the fact that the way it uses music from episode to episode, I mean, the whole show itself is, is, is based on jazz. You saw a little shout out to Charlie Parker. Uh, actually, in this freeze frame right here uh, that I'm looking at, uh, there's a Charlie Parker uh, a record in the top right hand corner. Um, just as like a hat tip to to how music is, inf is so influential uh, within the show. Um, they really do a good job of trying to like go like frame by frame of how it looks in the television show as well. Excuse me, on the television show, but in the in the cartoon the animated series as well. Um, but there is something that's missing. There's there hasn't like been a moment where it's just been like, oh my god, oh shit, like that. You want to flip the table over and just start screaming and give everybody high fives. There, there hasn't been like that particular moment. It's just the real big piece of nostalgia. It's like, oh, I've been here before. It's like going through an old picture book or an old scrapbook and like reminiscing of the time of the amount of absolute insane amount of fun that you used to have in this picture. But you're looking at the picture and it still doesn't give you that initial feel of that, of that same joy. That's, that's how it's kind of feeling. It's not bad. It's just, you're just reminiscing over better days, if, if that makes sense. This is only the first episode. It can grow and get a lot better. Um, if you're a first time viewer watching it, I, I think the, the sped up pace of how everything is going, get introduced to the characters a lot quicker, is probably going to do this series a lot more justice. It's definitely a hat tip and an homage to the people that love the, the original series. So if you are a fan of it, then I think you're going to, you know, enjoy this tiptoe through through memory lane it really does feel like you're, you're looking at an old photo album um there, there's a couple of moments that i thought like stylistically it probably could have just been a little bit more heightened um regarding some of the action sequences like uh when the the couple the star-crossed pair lover or trying she's trying to get away through, through the hyper gate and the police are, are closing in on her not about to let her go and she it's like making her last ditch effort. In the cartoon, that in the animated series, that moment is pretty pretty intense because you know his her her boy, the dude that's high off of the, the red eye, is like spazzing out and everything. He's already like past the point of no of no return. And she realizes that she's made this fatal mistake that she's never gonna get a chance to see Mars and then they get they get blown away. And the way the music is playing as everything is going is Spike is kind of like trailing behind him. It's it's a really cool cool and poignant moment. It was one of the moments that kind of like sets the tone for the entire series if it was your first time watching it. So I'm leaning in a space of like nostalgia, right? And I remember the feeling of watching this for the first time. And I'm like, dang, I didn't really know animated series and cartoons could like get down like this. Keep in mind, this came out, it came out in like 98. Uh, the property's well over 20 plus years old. So you see this same moment here and it just doesn't match it. And and, and all, I think that's asking for like an impossible task, right? You want to you want to re-remember a space of nostalgia that's 20 years ago, and maybe you know it's just not possible based off of what's given to them um, regarding the acting, uh, the, the setting, the special effects. I, I don't know how you fix that, but it just didn't really hit the mark as well or as much as I had hoped it would. Um, I'm also, I also kind of feel a little bit that way about Faye, uh, Faye Valentine, like she looks the part, she looks spot on, she's saying the right things, but the tone just doesn't seem to hit exactly like it was in the animated series. This is still just episode one though, so it has plenty of time to grow. I am not mad at this at all. Um, it's just par for the course, I guess that's what it is, it's just spectacularly on point it's not any higher it's not any worse it's just kind of like what you what you would expect so i guess so far like on a scale of like one to ten i would probably give it like a six it's definitely above average it's above a five uh but it's it's not anything that i'm gonna i would be like oh my god this is what you absolutely have to see right now based off of episode one i'm hoping that it surprises me as we get introduced to a lot more worlds more characters a deeper introduction into the syndicate we got a chance to see vicious really really early but you know, for those that uh, don't want to plow through 25 episodes of the original and you're just trying to like tell the story as quickly as you possibly can, then you probably do have to introduce uh, Vicious a little bit earlier. Uh, and of course, uh, we got a chance to get a glance at, uh, at Julia as well. So I do think that there are they're on to a to a decent start. Um, 
I'm not sure how I would feel about this if this was my very first time watching it and I didn't have the history of Cowboy Bebop to begin with. Because I know I have I've an expectation. I kind of know like what's going to happen. If I was a first time watcher, would this be enough to keep me keep me going? And I, I, I honestly don't know. It definitely wouldn't be a resounding yes, you know, because it is interesting. It's the, It looks cartoonish. The music is, is, is pretty cool. The acting is, is decent. But I don't know if it would be enough to keep me going. I'm going to keep going just because I know what the potential is. And also, I live in a life of nostalgia. So with that being said, let me know how you felt about it. Did it measure up to your expectations? Do you think it's going to measure up to your expectations later on? We still have other characters that we have yet to meet. Um, two important ones. One is Fuzzy with a tail. Uh, another one is a genius a uh, child who's pretty important to the Bebop as well. Um, and we haven't been introduced to those those characters either. Um, thank you so much for hanging out. It's been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to knocking out the rest of these episodes. Hey, please make sure you hit that subscription button and click the bell icon so that you can get up-to-date notifications anytime something like this drops and you can do these watch-alongs with me. Yo, it's your boy, Sintel, and it has been a slice. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.